Good afternoon, everyone. This is a public meeting of the Arts Ileana Regional Initiative Grants Program, Region 6. I'm Randy Hutz, Director of Finance, Wabash Valley Community Foundation, and former Arts Ileana board member, and I am from Terre Haute. Today is April 20th, 2020, and we are meeting by conference call and streaming live from a webinar. We welcome applicants who may be listening in today and would like to remind you that you are muted for this review. There is no direct contact or conversation about evaluation and disposition of applications before, during, or after the panel meeting. We are also welcoming some of our regional arts partners from around the state who are joining us for this first Zoom grant panel. At this time, we'd like the panelists and staff to introduce themselves, stating their name, occupation, and where they are from. Andrew, we'll have you go first. Hello, I'm Andrew Connor. I'm an economic and community developer from Terre Haute. I'm a supporter of the arts and a little bit of an amateur musician. I'm a father of four children, age 11 to 17. Thank you. Dee will take you next. I am Dee Dodd. I am the Low Vision Program Coordinator slash itinerant teacher for the blind at the Will Center uh, here in Terre Haute. Um, I'm just looking forward to working with everybody. Thanks. Now, Kit. Um, hi, I'm Catherine or Kit Newkirk. I live in Greencastle, Indiana. I'm retired most recently uh, from the Putnam County Museum as director. I serve on the Putnam County Convention and Visitors Bureau. I'm active with the Arts Council and other civic things. And um, I'm excited about this batch of applicants that we're looking at. Thanks, Kit. Now, Karen. Hello, I'm Karen Webb. I'm a media specialist with the Vigo County School Corporation and a technology resource teacher. I work in Terre Haute, but I live in Clay County. I love the arts. Uh, I've been involved in drama, theater, uh, singing, playing instruments. I'm very excited to be here. Thanks, and now Nancy. Hello, my name is Nancy Rain Mendez. I'm an instructor of art at the University of Southern Indiana in Evansville, Indiana. And that's in Vandenberg County, and I live in Evansville. Thanks, Nancy. And Rob, if you will. Hi, my name is Rob Millard Mendez, and I'm a professor of art at the University of Southern Indiana in Evansville, Indiana. Uh, and I am an artist and I teach woodworking and 3D design. Thanks, Rob. And Sherry, if you will. Sherry, are you with us? And of course, I forgot to unmute. Sorry about that. I'm Sherry Wright. Uh, I'm Associate Director at Arts Ileana, and uh, we are the uh, regional partner for Region 6 in Indiana. And uh, happy to have you all here today and excited to uh, get started with the review of applications. Thank you. Wonderful, thanks Sherry. Now we're gonna begin the panel review and this is how the process will work. I will announce the application, we will review and ask the first reader to begin the discussion. The first reader will provide their assessment of the application based upon the evaluation criteria and their perspective. Panelists, please note that applications do not need to be recapped since everyone has read it. Just provide your comments. After the first reader is finished, I will ask the second reader to present any new, additional, or opposing comments. We are not looking for consensus, just a full evaluation from the different perspectives of panelists that the panelists bring to the table. After the second reader has finished, I will open the discussion for final comments. Remember, in the interest of time, we are only looking for new, additional, and opposing viewpoints. 
a panelist has a conflict of interest, that panelist will be placed on hold while the application is reviewed. However, there are no conflicts of interest on this panel, so we get to skip that point. Finally, once the application has been reviewed by the full panel, we will ask the panel to update their scores in the online system. It is common for scores to change as a result of broader discussion. These scores save automatically. Are there any questions? Hearing none, let's begin. We'll start with the application from DePaul University School of Music. The first reader is Andrew. I may have just lost my video, but I'm going to continue on. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes we can, we can hear you. you. Okay. Uh, the video may click back on there. Uh, this was a good application. It was a uh, written and, and put together very well. The marketing materials were very high quality. Um, it was a little bit hard to evaluate how Andrew, I believe your video and audio have frozen for us. If we don't get you right away, we may ask that you call in and we'll move to second reader in the meantime. Is it frozen for you guys too? Oh. There he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's frozen. I can't hear him either. Okay, shall we move on to the second? Okay. Are we back there? Oh. Yeah, let's give it a shot again. <laughs> okay. Um, the, again, the marketing materials are really well done. Um, I'd like to know a little bit more about how underserved populations are reached or identified beyond just the description um, that they serve a geographically rural area, uh, which, which may be underserved. Um, there may be ways for them to increase some of their marketing and, and outreach beyond just Facebook. Um, but the, the fact that there are, there are many free events associated with this, I think is an excellent way of making it available to everyone in the community. Um, it intimately involves the students who are uh, performers in the bands. The concerts engage a broad audience uh, from the high school students to the faculty and students at DePa uh, to the general public as well. Uh, so I, I like the, the broad spectrum of people who are involved. Um, on the project management uh, section of the application, um, the, the staff is well qualified, experienced. It looks like this is um, well organized. I, I don't have any concerns about this being a, a viable project. Technically, there were, uh, I didn't see things about the timeline or the planning process um, for community engagement outside the two days of the event. So that would be something I would, would like to see a little bit more talking about the process uh, of how they go about the planning. Um, but, but generally, I thought it was a strong application. Thank you, Andrew. And now for our second reader, Rob. Uh, I'll start by concurring with a lot of the things that Andrew said. I think to kind of piggyback on the community aspect of the planning and project management, I mentioned something about how uh, the one for all sextet, which is kind of the centerpiece of much of this, um, they mentioned that they talked about or they had a survey of faculty and staff to choose them. And I thought that was great. Um, but perhaps maybe adding in some kind of a mechanism for the students to also have a voice there and contribute to that aspect of the planning. Um, I think that the um, their aspect of the um, community engagement as far as social media, I thought they covered pretty well. I did suggest the possibility of, since it's so easy and cheap now to do something like perhaps a live stream of some event, uh, they're pretty active on Facebook. So a Facebook Live or something similar might be a nice way to publicize at a very low cost and get in more eyes on the project. Um, I think one of the criteria that I saw was using previous year's experience to kind of uh, hone this application. I, I can't speak to all of their applications ever, but I think this one did a pretty good job of addressing most of the issues that, that can sometimes befall applicants in this process. So I thought it was pretty strong overall. I, I like the idea of the free um, 
the free aspects that they had, the, the storyteller event as well, I thought was pretty strong. So that's what I wanted to add. Thank you, Rob. And now do we have any new additional or opposing comments? Hearing none at this time, uh, please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Let me know if you need more time once I start to move to the next session, please. Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, give me a hold if anybody needs to hold. All right, seeing none, we'll move on to the second applicant. The second applicant is Indiana State University School of Arts. Our first reader will be Nancy. Okay, thank you. This was a this was also a very good application. It is for Rock Camp, which is a seven night residency program for high school students. This year they're doing something or they're proposing to do something new and that's the addition of the middle school students to the project. Um, so <clears throat> I thought that that was nice that they're adding in another uh, level and opening it up to more students. Um, I I felt like the application did a good job of explaining the hands-on learning experience for the youth in their project and the ability for those students to choose their own instruments and um, cre creating sort of a creative experience by allowing that kind of openness. On the second point, that was, so they had very high artistic merit. So I sort of broke mine up into the, the different um, categories. Um, under the community engagement part, I thought that they did a nice job this year of trying to open it up as I mentioned and um, they specifically mentioned culturally and socioeconomically diverse groups making accommodations for accessibility um, for their program participants. Let's see. They also mentioned in their application how they try to identify at-risk at and low-income students. So I thought that that was um, a really good part uh, or bolstered this part of the application. And um, also their connection to ISU's Center for Community Engagement and also the 21st Century Scholar Program in Indiana. For the last part, the project manage management part, it looks like the, pro uh, the project has um, has a very high level of expertise in their staff and they base that on their qualifications. So the artists and the teachers and administrators all seem very well qualified for this project and um, include active music teachers and performers throughout the country. So I thought this application showed a strong and effective program. It's been successful for the past six years. So I think including that new component is going to be good for this program and Overall, it was a very good application. Thank, thank you, Nancy. And now our second reader will be Andrew. Thank you very much. Um, I agree with the things that Nancy said. It's a um, well-organized application. I was really pleased to see um, that past comments from participants have been promptly incorporated into the planning. Uh, there were requests from past camp participants to add diversity awareness sessions and to add some off-site locations. Those were plans that have been uh, incorporated in, into the new uh, plans for the camp. I would have liked to see a little bit more detail about the biographies uh, of the instructors. It sounds like they're well qualified. It may be that some of those uh, specific instructors aren't identified at the time of the application, and, and, and I understand that. Um, a, a retrospective look at 
who specifically they've, they've had teaching in the past would also be helpful. In terms of, <laughs> pardon me, there's my dog barking. Um, in terms of community engagement, um, I really like the idea that this uh, combined um, with the Crossroads uh, Blues Fest, uh, I'm sorry, the Blues at the Crossroads Fest, as well as the Academy of Rock, which is a year round uh, instructional program uh, is from also from the Community School of the Arts. So rather than just the one week of camp, there's something going on all year that participants could continue with as well. Um, last thing was just on project management. Um, again, very well put together and I thought there was a really a genuine dedication to wanting to, to continually improve the camp. Uh, and I was impressed with that. Thank you, Andrew. And uh, now, do we have any new additional or opposing comments? I have a super quick comment. Um, so, and this is something that I think uh, is, would be helpful for, and the only reason why I say it is that it might be helpful for more people to hear is that um, when you get to upload the documentation, you get that one PDF you get to send forward. And I think that um, this, the uploading a poster, which they did, I thought was really nice, but with something like this, that's so about performance, it would have been great to see like a montage video of some of the students who like start playing an instrument at the beginning of the week and then how much they learn over the week or a video of students jamming or something that actually engages me with the sound because it's so important to the project. And I think that when you have that one PDF to kind of like do something splashy and capture the panelists attention, that making the most of that is so important. So I'd say that to um, the, the applicants here is that really use that opportunity to kind of wow us and, and impress us with what you're doing and engage us. Um, so that's all I wanted to say. Thanks, Rob. Do we have anything else? And, and I'll, I'll just add to that, Rob, that that PDF could also include links. So some of those PDFs had, did have links on, on, on other applications, did have links to, to many different resources. So that might not be something that people think of right away when they think of uploading a PDF uh, but, but that is an option to, to really include lots of pathways from that one PDF. Thanks for those comments. Now, anyone else? Okay, let's please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Uh, let me know if you need more time here. All right, raise a hand if you need a little more time. If not, we're going to move on to the third. Our third applicant is Indiana State University School of Music. Our first reader is Rob. Still muted, Rob. Good, can you hear me now? Good, okay, cool. Um, so, uh, sorry about that. Uh, I think this was a, a really great application, very easy to read, well put together. I think there's a, a something uh, in this that I thought was really excellent and it kind of piggybacks on um, what was just said about the artistic documentation with the video links on the PDF. Um, so th those short high quality videos really were something that allowed me to understand viscerally what's done in the project. Um, it looks like the project's exceptionally well managed. There's a lot of history here. I think the application did a good job of talking about the populations it serves. Um, I think the assessment that they do for this project is exemplary. They talk about a rich set of measurements and how they set, have many different criteria that they use. I think assessment is sometimes something that can be difficult in a project like this, but it's something that I think they've made a strength rather than a weakness. Um, I think that uh, one aspect I mentioned would be that um, the web marketing material was informative and well-designed, um, but uh, a place where we could click and hear the composer's music, the composer that they're wanting to 
uh, bring in this year. Something easy to find about him specifically would have been nice. Um, it's a pretty impressive application. It's kind of hard to, to pick a lot of things to, uh, to critique in this one. I thought it was quite strong. Thank you, Rob. And now our second reader, D. Yeah, I, I agree with what Rob has said. Um, it is a really, really good application. Um, I didn't have much to say about it other than um, I really liked, they spoke about um, making sure that the accommodations for anybody that wanted to attend were made. And I think that's a big deal and something that always needs to be addressed in any event. That was about all that I saw. Thank you, Dee. Uh, any new additional or opposing comments? Um, I really like that, as we had already stated, it's been around for 54 years, but the management is distributed among different groups collaborating with each other. We have the composers, the performers, the educators, the publicists, the graphic designers, and the students. And their outreach to underserved communities to, is to be commended. And um, it was mentioned that almost the entire population of the ISU School of Music is involved. That is a remarkable commitment. Thank you, Karen. Any other comments? All right, if you would please finalize your scores and update your online comments, let me know if you need more time. All right, we're going to move along to number four, if, unless anyone needs another moment. Seeing none, our fourth applicant is Indiana State University Creative Writing Program. Kit is our first reader. Um, I'm a first reader for the first time, so I appreciate your uh, help and support in this. Um, I think the artistic Qual merit is high on this project. They've got uh, very distinctive, intriguing voices from uh, different uh, communities. Um, I've, I'm guessing that this might be their first uh, time to apply um, because um, unlike some of the projects which have their um, artists out in the community teaching, students teaching teachers, uh, this seems to be mainly centered on uh, the college students, uh, although they do mention working with ISU and Rose Holman um, and the uh, poetry group. But that's, it's unclear what the relationship is between those organizations and this writing um, project. So I think they could strengthen uh, future applications by uh, detailing how they are going to do that. And um, I would also encourage them to uh, reach out beyond the university um, even more, as well as the Poetry Asylum. Uh, what about the um, patrons of the public library or school kids? How about getting the uh, writers out um, in the community as long as they're in town? So that would be my suggestion. Also, um, just on the question of attendance, uh, they're projecting um, 250 participants, that is attendees at the readings. Um, but they say that they average about 70 per reading uh, in past years. And so I'm wondering if that projection includes repeat um, attendees to the event. So um, I don't know if the, that should be clarified or not. Um, on project management, uh, it seems to me that they have a, a skilled set of leaders. Um, I think the budget makes pretty good sense. Um, but here again, um, as we've said on others, they could uh, strengthen the application with more um, documentation. Um, that we have a video of one of the poets, for example, and we have the bios of the other poets. Um, but um, it would be good to see how uh, the community is reacting to the readings 
um, oh, I'm sorry, and I, I forgot to say earlier on reaching out into the community, how about going off campus uh, with the readings? Uh, these were uh, to be done in the art gallery. Um, and uh, also, uh, I think they could improve the application with a stronger plan for assessing their results. Um, since the uh, ISU Music Festival has such good experience with this, maybe they could walk across campus and collaborate a little bit on how uh, to do that, to set up a tool or several tools for evaluating their work. Um, I th they have a Facebook presence, but I think it's not very active. And I wonder if, and I'm not an expert in this, but I wonder if Facebook is the best way to reach the um, literary uh, crowd in the area. So um, that's what I have to say. Thank you, Kit. And our second reader will be Nancy. Okay, thank you. I agree with the comments that were made. I also wanted to add that I appreciated that in this application that they included the bios as well um, and agree that the promotional material, they could have um, maybe edited the video a little bit. It was really long. And um, another way that they might get there, they might be able to get this event out is to stream it in some on some platform that um, where more people could see it. So that those are just a couple of things. And then let me see what else I had. Okay. Um, I did want to mention that in the application, they, they did say that, that this event is open to the public. So I don't know if that was not clear, um, but I, I saw that. And so it is open to the public. It, I don't think it just includes the university. Now, you know, how much of the public is, is able to get that information? I, you know, maybe there, that's a question with the marketing material. And let's see, um, the, the application did do a really nice job of, of um, addressing equity and diversity. I thought that that was very strong in this application. And also it looks like they are um, collaborating between ISU departments. So that part was also really interesting. This part I was not very clear on, or it, did, it seemed unclear to me. This is a quote from the application that says, we'll primarily use social media engagement and responses. Now that was to, um, to assess the program. And I felt like that was unclear because it, it didn't really say how that was going to happen. You could technically say that for say like likes on Facebook. And you know, is that really the same thing as maybe having somebody fill out a more comprehensive type of response. So that was one thing that I noticed in this application. They could probably do a little bit of a better job there by thinking about other ways to get some feedback. Um, and also maybe try to get that from the community, not just within the university. Okay, the last part, um, it looked like that you know, on the management end of things that this is a an established project and the um excuse me the management part of it it does seem like there's a high level um of um, proficiency with putting a program like this on for each one of the people that they mentioned um let me see if there's anything else sorry Yes, okay. I didn't have any, any problem with that part of it, sorry. I thought I had another note on that. Yeah, so I think it was a really good application. It was just a little bit, there was a lot in it that could have been cut down and geared more towards the panelists that, so we don't have to go watching a really long video, say, you know, cutting that down, making it more clear, and a little bit more on the outreach. That's all I have. Thank you, Nancy. And now we're looking for any new additional or opposing comments. Um, I was wondering um, what was the 
process of the selection of the artist. I wasn't really clear about that point. Was there a committee involved? We have um, all of the proposed writers are female. Three of the four artists, artists are employed by higher educational institutions. So I just wondered what the process was in deciding who would be invited. Um, one more thing, uh, I know it, it covers an area, there's advertising out there, promotion. I was wondering um, if it reached out into the other counties beyond Vigo County that are represented in Arts Ileana. Thank you for those comments, Karen. Anyone else? I, I have something really quick and I think all the comments so far have been great. Um, I will say that on the, the one page of documentation that we were uh, uh, required to look at, uh, a couple of the links on there weren't working anymore. And then just for people who are listening at home and planning on applying at some point, I'm not sure if this will change, but the panelists are only required to watch three minutes of, of video or audio. So I think that's something to make, and Nancy mentioned this, and I think it's really good to just say that yeah, I think that's your target range um, as far as like what you'd like to to put put up there for us. That's all. Thank you, Rob. Anyone else? Anything to add? Okay. Uh, please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Uh, let me know if you need any more time. Yeah, I did want to break in real fast. It's Paige from the Arts Commission, and that is with regard to those links. Um, the, you can't open them under Document Viewer. You would have to actually download the PDF, and, and that's on us. <laughs> that was our, our miss when we uh, put the application together, not realizing that you cannot click a link under our, um, our, on the Document Viewer. So please don't discount uh, folks for that if indeed you had that experience as well. Thank you. Thank you, Paige. All right, I believe it's time to move on to our fifth applicant. Our fifth applicant is the Lin Linda Lupke String Festival. Dee is our first reader. Yes, and it's my first time being a first reader, so patience, please, guys. Um, I found this to be a very uh, interesting, I mean, I, I thought it, was, it sounds like a great project. Uh, it looks like they were going to bring Moxie strings, and they attached a video of two, it's a female group playing uh, string instruments, and they were going to be gearing this towards uh, children in Vigo County grades five through 12, uh, kind of give them a new perspective on uh, and motivating them to play a string instrument if they're not already. Uh, it looked like in the end, they were actually gonna be able to perform with that group, which is a nationally recognized group. Uh, they attached a really neat video to watch of the girls kind of interacting with uh, another group like they'll be interacting with. Um, they're pretty funny. Uh, they had looked like three different, they used every bit of social media that they could. Um, I like that, don't always see that in all applications. Um, the only thing that I ran across from a disability perspective was some of the wording in one of them. Uh, they, it looks like the director actually is educated when it comes to disabilities and she works with, uh, says that, let me see, let me find a part where I was on. Um, She was a director of, okay, she's worked with disability, with de developmental disabilities, um, and that was what her strong point was, but then at one point they referred to uh, being able to say they can handle students with physical disabilities, and I just feel like as far as language school, skills when it comes to disability community, they need to find a better way to word that, more maybe to like equip to work with a student with disabilities, not making it sound like a negative thing, like they're handling them or wrangling them. Um, but I mean, I like the fact that they're getting students to step out of their comfort zones, uh, that they're, it's really inclusive. Um, it also said that they, that they would work with them without any exception, which made me think that that meant that they would work with anybody, didn't matter what type of disability or walk of life. Um, I found it to be an altogether pretty good project. I believe that it's, I think this is its second year. 
I could be wrong. Um, I think so, yeah, because it says that they, they had had quite a few people turn out last year, um, but this is the first year that we have a Moxie come with them. The budget looked okay. Let me see. Other than that, I, I mean, it looked to be, like I said, a pretty good project. It's my first time, guys. So uh, if, the, if the second panelist has something else to say, I think, like I said, it, other than that, I didn't find much wrong with it. Thank you, Dee. Uh, now our second reader will be Karen. Okay, just, I agree with everything that was said. Just a few additions. Um, yes, the group Moxie string seems like a strong um, part of this. It will give the children added excitement in the project. Um, it says, um, it was mentioned that the faculty are professional musicians and or strings teachers from across Indiana. That is a great commitment. Uh, mention other names and locations would add to the proposal. I would like to know who they are. Um, it mentions that the population is limited to Vigo County students with some outreach beyond the six counties served by Arts Indiana. Uh, there was mention of Indianapolis, Elkhart, Bloomington, Illinois, and Ohio. So has some attempt been made to um, serve the other five counties in the Arts Indiana area? That would be Clay Park, Putnam, Sullivan, and Vermilion counties. Um, We've seen great care has been taken to see that all the children who have indicated an interest may participate, even if they cannot afford the fee. So that's to be commended. Um, the work of visiting every Vigo County school is commendable also because that takes in a big territory. Would it be possible to visit those schools in those other counties served by Arts Ileana? The outline of activities is well constructed may need some specifics. Which schools receive the flyers, promotional materials? Um, the proposal, the, excuse me, the proposal mentions that evaluation data is collected. Um, what form does this take? Is it a survey? To whom is it distributed? But all in all, I enjoyed reading this and it sounds like a very exciting program. Karen, thank you for your comments. And now, any new additional or opposing comments? Um, I noted, oh, sorry. I, is it, okay, I noted that this uh, program is in its seventh, has been going on for seven years. So I just wanted to make that, I think the first reader said the second year, but I have seven years. That's correct. I was, that was, I was coming in with a point of information there that it's oh, the okay. seventh year. Yes, thank you, Nancy. Okay, I have uh, just another comment. I also just wanted to commend the applica application for this passage. They say, they, they write this. The program targets, um, I'm sorry, in seven years we have never turned away a child for any reason, including inability to pay the registration fee. So I noted that because I thought that was really super impressive. Um, and also the last thing I wanna say is in this application, they also negotiated with their um, musical artists to they negotiated the price down so that they could bring them in. So I also just wanted to commend the applicant for that. That's it. Thank you for your comments, Nancy. Anyone else? Yeah, I just wanted to say I, I agree that um, inviting Moxie Strings to be the facilitator or clinicians for this is a really bold step. It, it seems like that's a different direction than they, they may have uh, gone in the past for, for this, uh, uh, this event. I think that has potential to really enliven and, and give it a lot of appeal beyond the local area, maybe statewide. The one thing that I thought was weak, not necessarily in the application, but in the, in the project was marketing. Um, and, and that may be a bit of a new thing is they, they think beyond just the, the local area but I think there's potential for them to reach more students and teachers beyond Vigo County or even this, this local region. Um, but they might need some help in terms of creating those marketing materials. So I'd love to see them reach out to the Convention and Visitors Bureau 
or to some marketing or graphic designers uh, to, to try to get some help in making those more compelling. I think they've got a, a great project. Um, getting the word out and doing a little recruitment could really make it pop. Thank you, Andrew. Anyone else? All right, please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Let me know if you need some more time. All right, moving along to our sixth applicant. Our sixth applicant is National Crossroads Bluegrass Acoustic Music Association. And Karen, you are our first reader. Well, this is my first time as a first reader, so please bear with me also. Um, the enthusiasm for the promotion and preservation of bluegrass music is obvious in this proposal, along with passion for performing. Um, it appears that the group submitting the grant, grant is a part of the National Crossroads Bluegrass Acoustic Music Association. That should help them belonging to a national organization. Um, a combination of scheduled performing groups along with an opportunity for all interested musicians to play promotes the goal. It might be helpful to have a formal process to locate quality groups to perform. I didn't see that in the application. Informal conversation is a good start. I did see that mentioned because often word of mouth is a great indicator of what the public wants to hear. The inclusion of new groups is an asset. It's noted that local youth regularly attend and play. Um, is there a plan maybe to actively seek out, train, and encourage area youth in the Arts Ileana area? Under community engagement, I really like this statement. The statement, many people play bluegrass and acoustic music on a variety of instruments, but don't have other people to play with is a strong reflection of need. You have people with a talent, people with a love of something, and they need an outlet to express that. And they need to be together to do that. The sessions open to the public are very important. Uh, there's an age range from four years old to 96, with, which is amazing. The jamming sessions are open to anyone, so there's access. Um, anybody who wants to participate, no matter the level of ability. Uh, the promotion plan includes social media, radio, newspaper ads, et cetera. Word of mouth, of course, was mentioned. Um, we might wanna see more things done in the promotional area, uh, getting materials out to people, getting the word out for people. There's a survey that's used at the end of each event that's good to get feedback. I didn't see who was responsible for the documentation of that. And also, uh, is there an underserved group that should be targeted? I didn't see a mention of that. Um, does a local association have a relationship with the instructors uh, at the Wabash Valley Music Studio that was offered that does lessons for children to play, sing, and perform bluegrass music. So it'd be interesting to know more about that relationship. Um, under project management, many names were listed to ensure that the events are successful. It might be helpful, it would have been helpful for me to know how uh, the lead staff the lead staff member is experienced and what is the role of each person in making this, these events successful. Uh, the timeline is detailed, not only for the monthly events, but also for the timeline for each event. There's a featured band that plays for 45 minutes at the beginning, one at the end, and the time in between is, is the jamming session time when all the people who really want to play get a chance to be together and uh, spend that time with each other and improving their skills. Um, one thing I was noting that if we had advertising that had all the dates and all the bands for the entire year, people would know in advance what bands are going to be there, it would promote it, um, they would know who was going to be there and to plan their schedules around it. Something else that m the group might think about is 
featuring a young person from time to time. It doesn't have to be at every monthly event, but that would be an exciting part. It would add to um, bringing our community in, getting new people in there, younger people in there. So all in all, this was a pleasure to read and I thank you very much. Thank you for your comments, Karen. And now Kit is our second reader. Okay, my first time second reading. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm glad that uh, these, this group is out there pre preserving uh, bluegrass music, which is really a regional form uh, uh, that's very strong or used to be very strong here in Indiana. Um, I think that um, there are ways the applicant, application could be improved, that some of which have already been mentioned. I agree with everything I've heard so far. Um, I'm glad that they're involving national artists. Uh, although I wonder if this is really a national organization, it, despite its name, it seems to be fairly regional, but I can't tell that. Um, maybe if we had the, um, where the officers or the responsible people live, that would give us a clearer picture of how widespread the organization is. But if they're gathering every month, it seems more likely regional than national. Um, I, the way I read the application, uh, I thought they were proposing in the future to do a written survey in addition to uh, talking with people at the events. And I think that would be a good idea to do that. Um, uh, the promotional act, promotional uh, stuff that we saw included feature stories in the Terre Haute newspaper, which is great. Earned media is better than advertising. Um, but I'm wondering if they could add to their outreach by contacting media in other communities, in, especially in the area we serve, the counties uh, in our area. Um, I, I'm thinking that they could strengthen the community engagement aspect of the application also by looking for systematic ways to extend the reach uh, to new audiences. For example, um, could they strengthen their social media uh, approach? And uh, what about taking some of these events to different venues, which might draw in different people uh, to, to do this important music work. Um, as, as a grantor, I like to know what the what difference the grant money is going to make to the program. Uh, I'm wondering if this grant will um, let them bring more artists or new artists or if it's uh, bolstering their budget. Uh, so those uh and i also wonder if they could strengthen the draw by doing a uh, somewhat more formal activities like uh, beginning a beginner's class or a master uh, class for uh, musicians of different ages and skill levels um maybe it, just a little bit more organization or occasionally doing that would um, make newcomers feel specifically invited. So that's what I have to say. Thank you for your comments, Kit. And now any new additional or opposing comments? I, uh, I was really excited about this application. It was significantly different from a lot of the other applications that we've received from um, more traditional or established arts groups. And I would just distinguish a little bit an enthusiasm for the project from our evaluations of the specific criteria for the application. So I, I really liked what they're doing. I think there were a lot of good comments that are constructive for how the application itself uh, could be improved. And, and that's not a kind of existential thing that uh, maybe is the first thing a group thinks about. 
but as they embrace community outreach, as they think about telling their story of who their, their organizers and board members are, that will make them better and make them more effective. And, and that, that's the real goal. So um, I think these are all really constructive and, and helpful things. One specific suggestion I had was that in describing the qualifications or the background of the board, that can be a, a, a very um, easy conversational style thing, just some about the board profiles that could be included. So it doesn't have to be a, a big CV or a resume sort of formal presentation. Just tell us a little bit about who these people are and, and why they're interested and in, in, in how they help the group. Um, that's all I had. Thanks, Andrew. Any other comments this time? I'd like to say a couple more things. Um, I agree with Andrew about um, in, informally uh, recognizing these leaders. And I also wanted to endorse his suggestion about getting in touch with the Convention and Visitors Bureaus for publicity purposes. And I think this um, bluegrass music would be a, an ideal thing to share with the Convention and Visitors Bureau. And I plan to share it with mine here in Putnam County. So. Thanks, Kit. Anyone else? Any other comments? All right, please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Please let me know if you need some more time. Okay, moving along, our number seven applicant, Rose Holman Performing Arts Series. Rob is our first reader. Hi, okay. Uh, so I thought on the whole, this was a pretty strong application. I think uh, the applicant did a really good job of uh, giving us a sense of the vivacity and energy of the performance. And I think they described it really well and compellingly. Um, uh, I wish that there had been a little bit more information about how the specific artists were chosen for the event. I, I would have liked to see that clearer. Um, I think the, the PDF that they supplied as far as publicity stuff was okay. It was a story about velocity and their importance and what they do, but I really think that the name of the troupe is Velocity. So I would have liked to have seen some dancing and, and felt some of that energy and had a link in there that would have helped sell it. Because um, it's, it's a strong performance, I think it just needed to be sold a little more strongly. Um, I think the, the one in the second area here about the um, measuring success aspect, I think they talk about how one of the criteria for measuring success would have been if people are returned for other performances after they see velocity. Um, I think I'd like to see survey data on that. It's something that if ISC has funded stuff in the past, if we could see some very specific data with numbers, I think that would be, make it a lot stronger. Um, I think the social media presence of the organization was good. It felt pretty up to date. Um, I thought that, that part was nice. I think when, when organizations put their Instagram or their Facebook on here and there's a link and I go to it, if the last post was two years ago, I think to myself, is this really being kept up very well? I think these folks did a good job. Um, I think from the project management standpoint, the budget looked pretty good. I had, did have a question about um, the, there's an item on the budget called hospitality. I am not a budget person or an accountant, so I don't really know what that means. It seems like maybe if that were broken out in a way where things seemed more concrete, that might've been nice. Again, uh, that's just uh, me kind of being nitpicky. On the whole, I thought it was a fairly strong application. Thanks, Rob. And now our second reader will be Andrew. I thought this was a strong project. I uh, have strong confidence in this. I would echo what Rob said. I really wanted to see something more visual, some media that let me know who this Irish dance group was. Um, I got a good feeling for uh, Hatfield Hall's uh, overall season of performances that those promotional materials were great. I just would like to see more something specific for uh, this specific group. In community engagement, I really liked 
uh, their work with the 14th and Chestnut Center, bringing kids in uh, with the free tickets there. And then also the master class with the Academy of Dance that really integrates the performance into the community, uh, both by, by bringing some uh, underserved populations in and taking the performers out to work with young dancers in the community. I thought that was a, a great part of the, uh, of the proposal. Um, on project management, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more uh, information about the staffing. Uh, listed some names and, and titles, uh, just a little more exposition there about um, what their background is, qualifications, and that kind of thing. Uh, but otherwise, uh, it's a, a solid proposal, good institutional support, uh, and uh, overall well done. Thank you, Andrew. And now, uh, any new, additional, or opposing comments? I was wondering how the events are chosen. Are community groups invited to assist in the selection? Uh, we mentioned the master class. I don't know if this would be feasible or not, but it would be really nice if some filming, some videotaping of that event could be done and then quickly edited to show at the, the professional performance that evening. I think the public would really like to hear about that master class and see what the children can do. And thank you for your comments. Anyone else? All right, let's please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Uh, let me know if you need some more time. All right, let's move along to our eighth applicant. That is St. Mary of the Woods College. Nancy is our first reader. Okay, thank you. Um, I really enjoyed watching the videos and listening to what um, they've done in the past. For this application, um, though I was a little bit confused, I read it more than a few times. And maybe my second reader will ha have had a different experience, but I've, I found that at the end of it, I still was a little confused about what they were going to do, what the project was. So <clears throat> the reason for that is that the information that they gave in their application was for past events. And it sounds like for this event, they're adding um, another component that they haven't done before. So the, uh, the application does outline an impressive number of successes for a program that's only run twice. Um, the organization has said that they've received very good feedback from pa past participants and from the workshops. And I've no doubt that that's true. They're, like I said, their um, video is really quite good. Um, and also they noted that their students went on to win, um, uh, let's see, a, a Mayo International a choral festival, and they attributed some of this to their choral workshop um, from the past. They also have successfully partnered with the Vigo County His History Center, although I know that that was ended up being canceled because of, you know, everything that's going on. But that being said, I still think that that part of it was really strong. Um, so for this program, for this application, what they were um, asking for or what they were saying they were doing was bringing in 12 participating artists, at least they listed 12 under that part of the application. And they've received commitment from one, but that commitment is from an actor and not necessarily a singer. So that's one part of the confusion that I found with this application because they, it wasn't really clear to me how that was going to link in with what they've done in the past. Um, okay, and so I would like to have seen the biographies and accomplishments of the other artists um, that they're wanting to bring in for this next 
um, season, I guess, of or this this next project, and uh, you know, just to see if they're of the same caliber. With that being said, the promotional material, as I said, it looks like they've really put on some great programming, really high caliber um, artists. I'm not questioning that at all. <clears throat> it's just that it it became a little bit confusing to me. Okay, let's see. So that's under artistic quality, under um, the community engagement portion of it. The application outlines a commitment to offer access to the community, students in the area, school and churches. I thought that was quite good. They also addressed the special needs accommodations for participants and that they were um, able to do that. The program is free of charge. And I think that that is always excellent. It, it offers an opportunity for um, underserved populations to benefit from this program. The application mentioned several ways that they will try to provide access, including helping with transportation. I would like to see details on that, um, but that's still quite commendable. Um, the event is meant to serve diverse populations, but um, I thought it was a little unclear if uh, how they were going to see how they're going to do that, um, especially with the artists that they're bringing in, and you know what the connection is with this project and that part of the, um, the requirements for the, for the um, grant. Under the project management, I, the, I had an issue with this part of it because it was unknown as far as who they were bringing in. And so when you look at the budget and you don't really know who is coming in, it's, it becomes a bit unclear. So I would like to have more information on the timeline. And the other thing that I questioned um, was the timeline since they only have that one secured artist. With that being said, I think that this application, I gave it relatively high scores despite all of that. Maybe it sounds like I'm being overly critical, but I was the first reader on it. And those are the things that, that I caught. So again, just lack of clarity I felt, um, but I know that they have shown or they seem to have shown a really high level of success in the past. Um, and I'm really interested to hear what the second reader has to say. Thank you, Nancy. And now for our second reader, Karen. I agree with everything that Nancy has said. Um, I found it a little confusing also. I saw the uh, success building upon the past workshops with the addition of uh, the person involved in storytelling and theater. Um, it was noted that someone had visited local schools in the past, and so I'm assuming that would be schools in Vigo County, which is where St. Mary of the Woods College is located in that in Vigo County. So I wondered if anyone had visited any of the other area schools um, just to make a greater impact. Um, yes, there is the resident, the former resident, Terre Haute resident Savannah Ray who's going to be representing the areas of storytelling and theater, but yes, it's, I didn't see the other professionals' names. So naming them would help to illustrate the quality of this workshop. Um, under community engagement, I think extending the invocation beyond St. Mary of the Woods College and the Vigo County High Schools would really add to this. Um, it was mentioned in the proposal that students in Clay and or Vermilion counties might be approached. I would like to see that. I also mentioned including youth in local community and church choirs. That would be a good extension, especially for those who do not attend a public school. And so to include those children would be an asset. Project management. Um, this is where I really got a little fuzzy. To me, it's unclear of when the students and their high school directors would be involved in the five to seven day workshop. The spring semester of 2021 was noted. Uh, it was mentioned it could happen as early as late January. But then I'm worried about the practices because are these going to be practice, are they going to have the rehearsals at the high school? Are they going to be at the college? Are they going to be in the evening? Um, and I'm thinking if some of these are during the, the school day, uh, or maybe it might be just after school, um, when these high school groups are going to be working. 
when will they meet with the visiting artists? Um, how many sessions will they have with the visiting artists? Um, I think, yeah, a detailed timeline. That's what I really needed. A detailed timeline is needed in order to understand when these students would be working with the directors and the professionals. But this proposal has great potential. Thank you for your comments, Karen. Uh, and now any new additional or opposing comments? Hearing none, please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Let me know if you need more time. Okay, moving on. This concludes the Region Initiative Grant Panel for Region 6. Applicants will be notified of status of their grant following the June meeting of the Indiana Arts Commissioners. If you have any questions, please contact Sherry Wright. Thank you. Thank you all for being here.